for the purposes of our lesson today, I will also be reading from Deuteronomy, but I will begin with the very first verse, the first and second verse, and then I will skip to verse 4 through 9. And it reads this way. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to, to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all of God's decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy a long life. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. And when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. The word of God for the people of God. God. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, may the words from my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, I ask that you pour a special anointing upon your servant that when your people look this way, they only see the cross, the guiding light that gives them faith. And when they hear a voice, God, let them only hear your voice, the words that redeem, encourage, and provide strength for the journey. And so now, God, help me. Help me make your word easy to remember. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'd like to preach from the subject, when is the great commandment relevant? When is the great commandment relevant? With a subtitle, is it too late to change the headlines? Some of the news headlines I read on Monday were the following. From the Business Insider, they stated that the 10 most important things in the world right now are, one, President Obama's proposed policy on carbon dioxide emissions, two, super typhoon, super typhoon, Sadler, headed towards Japan, Taiwan, and China. Third, China has unveiled new rules that ban trading from borrowing and repaying stocks on the same day to crack down on short sales. Well, CNN on Monday had these headlines. The feds to help Baltimore quill violence. India's massive internet porn purge. And a newborn baby pulled alive from Beijing toilet. The Baltimore Sun headline had these titles. Mosby says Baltimore's homicide commission is a waste of money. The commission would consist of city leaders, law enforcement commanders, academics, public health officials, and others to identify homicide trends and develop target responses. Another headline said, Maryland has a head start in meeting controversial federal climate rules. And and another title said, three ways to stop violence from happening. One was the 300 men march on Washington. Another was safe streets, which actually received the title because something uh, negative had happened in their uh, facility. And then there was also the Baltimore Homicide Review Commission. And then the one that really disturbed me was one out of Telegraph headline, which said that future criminals can be spotted at nursery school, studies suggest. And then there are some other headlines that you may not have heard and that is the Baltimore Washington International Airport. Service workers are being paid less than the Maryland mandated minimum wage because there is a loophole on out-of-state private contractors that don't, are, are not bound by this law. The word on the street is that the homicides in Sandtown Winchester have actually gotten worse since Freddie Gray's death, while, Mer- while Mosby states that law enforcement 
officials already know what is driving the city's record to an all-time high. These are just some of the headlines that I read on Monday, which again brings us back to the question, when is the great commandment relevant? Is it possible or is it just too late to change the headlines? Well, I'm not gonna make you wait until the end of the message. Instead, I'm gonna tell you right now, the great commandment is relevant every day ending in Y. For those of you who are members, you know how I'm gonna start this conversation. It's relevant on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's good on a rainy day, a sunny day, a windy day, any day ending in Y. The great commandment is always relevant. And to answer the other question, no, it is not too late to change the headlines, and let me explain why. Each of us, despite our propensity, our tendency, our stubbornness, or even our unwillingness to obey God was created in the image of God. The Apostle John wrote, God is love. And the prophets say that Jesus, Emmanuel, is God among us. And Jesus is the epitome, the cornerstone, the living example of love personified. And the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of love in us and expressed through us. Thus, love in all of its forms, agape, eros, and philios, is in our DNA. Each of us were created in love, and regardless of our sinful nature or whatever Jerry Springer puts on television or any of those other broadcasts that, that promote this negativity about our communities, we were created in love. Love was in Jeffrey Dahmer. That's right, a cannibal, a serial killer, and, self of, and a sex offender. Love was in Adolf Hitler, the primary leader of the Jewish Holocaust. Love is in the misguided followers of Al-Qaeda and ISIS. The problem is, is that the love is buried so deep, we need to dig it up. So deep, we need to dig it up. Love is a lamp under a basket that needs to be uncovered and placed on the mantle so that all the world can see it. Love is in us. It needs to be nurtured and natured. And I can tell you, I've seen this unconditional love at Milford. If you were listening to the headline, each of these events could, could easily be turned around if we would just simply have the courage to embrace the love inside of us by following God's instructions. Each of those headlines could be turned around for the positive if we would just have the courage to embrace the love inside of us. And so let's look at what Moses has to say to the people in Deuteronomy. In verse 1, these are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess so that you, everyone say, so that you, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you so that you may enjoy long life. So that you. So that you. I literally had to ponder that phrase over and over again because that statement says that this is a now reality, so that you. And so let me share with you a confession. I used to say that I think that's what some of us also may agree or used to think was that we are dealing with a lost generation of young folks. I used to say that. I used to say we need to concentrate our energy on early childhood development, elementary and middle school children who actually listen to instructions because these high schools are just know-it-alls. Anybody with me? That's what I used to say. But then, as I read the text, the Bible says we have to teach and show our children unconditional love at every stage of their lives. Every stage of their lives. And let me fill you in a little something. How many of you remember the passage of scripture that says, train a child up in the way they should go so that when they are old, they shall not depart from it? How many of you remember that text? Well, guess what? I'm about to trip you up for a second. 
The word old means mature. In Hebrew, the word old means mature. I don't know about you, but I don't know too many mature 18-year-olds. But yet we call them adults. I don't know about you, but I know very few mature 21-year-olds. But we tell them they can drink. Y'all following this train of thought, right? The Bible says, train them up until they are old, so that when they are old, they shall not depart from it. So when do we stop training them? When they are mature. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me? Uh, Some of y'all are like, man, really? (laughs) I got a 20-something-year-old in my house. I still ain't seen the maturity in them. I'm still on the job? Yes, you are still on the job. Train a child up until they are old, and when they are old, they shall not depart from it. So that. So that you is a present tense, a now directive. It is not based on a future outcome, but a now reality. When our children were smaller, we forgave them quickly and corrected them gently when they made a mistake. Did we not? When they were smaller. But as they got older, hmm, our love became conditional. Anybody? Anybody? Tell the truth, shame the devil. You know it. As they got older, as they got older, we started having this conversation about actions equal what? Consequences. See, y'all know. I knew y'all knew. I knew y'all knew. Actions equal consequences. Because you know what? That's the way the real world is. Isn't that what we tell them? That's what we tell them. Actions equals consequences. As they got older, but you know what? I wonder if that's the world that God created. There's a little less joy. In fact, I have seen very little joy in the media because of this mentality of judgment and punishment and literally excusing or justifying our own sins. But if we taught and exemplified the love that created us, God's unconditional love, we could change the headline. Moses goes on to say in verse 5, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And just in case you didn't catch it in the children's message, that's everything. We got to love God with everything. With our thoughts, our actions, our movements, our being, we need to love God with everything. But that's a hard thing to do. In fact... uh, In Bible study, we talked about uh, uh, how Jesus uh, was telling the story about how we ought to love our enemies. And that uh, in loving our enemies, uh, we also need to pray for those who persecute us. And that if someone smacks us on the cheek, we need to turn the other cheek. Y'all remember that passage of scripture? Uh Uh-huh. Well, one of the the friends, it was two friends talking. One friend said to the other one, you know, uh, I'm having a hard time understanding this scripture. And because I don't understand it, it's kind of hard for me to to, to fulfill it. Well, the other friend said, well, you know what? I understand it exactly. I know exactly what it's saying. The problem is I just don't want to do it. (laughs) But God's action is to give everything. 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 Regardless of the situation, we ought to love one another unconditionally. Again, God leaves nothing out in verse 6. He says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Again, church, God left out nothing. When is the great commandment relevant? When is it taught? Who should hear the message? Should the commandments be governed by our minds that are bombarded with negative images and racial tensions and wars against each other? Or should these commands be governed by our hearts that were created in love, grace, empathy, and compassion, the same type of love I've seen in each and every one of you? you some of y'all don't know, but I, I know what you're doing. 
Mm -hmm. I know about some of the giving you've been giving away, and I know about how all the love you've been sharing with others, and I know about how you give up your time and talents unconditionally. I, I know about some of these things. Y'all don't know I know, but I know. I know. I watch you here. I watch you when you're not here. I watch you in the supermarket. Y'all didn't know I was there. <laughs> I know some of y'all shop at the Gucci Giants. I know where y'all shop. <laughs> Think I ain't seen you? I seen y'all shop at the other Giants, too. I know where you are. I've seen you. I've seen how you interact with people. I know how you extend your love to others. But should we reserve talking about these commandments just on Sunday, Sunday mornings or in Bible study, just around church folks where it's safe? Or should we share the commandments to whomever will listen? I can assure you that there are millions, I mean literally millions of people who are dying to hear a word from the Lord. Dying to hear a word from the Lord. And you can be that person. And so I want to ask something of you. That Bible that you have sitting on your nightstand in your bedroom. Or that Bible that you have displayed on the living room table. Or that Bible that you have uh, that's been passed down from generation to generation that you have in your closets. I need you to pull them out, dust them off, and start studying. The Bible tells us that we need to study this word when we rise and when we go to sleep. Let the word of God give you courage for the days ahead and let the word of God be your sweet lullaby after a long and trying day so that God's word will not only be encouragement for the journey, God's word will abide in your heart so you can share it with others in their time of need Folks are looking for a word from the Lord. You can interpret it for them, but they're looking for a word from the Lord. They're looking for God's wisdom. They're looking for words that will give them strength for the journey, that will upgird, undergird their faith. True story. Young man comes to my house. He gives me some help with my, uh, 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 with my water. We have a water system in our home. And a young man blesses me with reducing my bill. And so he's there for about uh, every bit of about 45 minutes because it turns out that he's an atheist, doesn't believe in God. And so we have this dialogue back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and we, we, we just, we're just dialoguing and dialoguing. And so I said, you know what? I'd like to continue this conversation. You know what he said? So would I. And so I took his number. And then later on that day, I texted him. I said, you know what? You don't know it, but just our dialogue helped me build my faith. An atheist helped make my faith stronger. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? God, children of God, we, there are people dying for this word. And so as I move to a close, I'd like to reflect on verse 9. Verse 9 says, write the commandments on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This Jewish tradition, which is called mezuzah, which is plural for mezuzah, dates back over 4,000 years ago and is still being practiced today in Jewish households. The Torah, the Ten Commandments or portions of the Torah are posted on door frames or the entryway of Jewish household as a constant reminder of God's instructions. So imagine this, that before you go home every night as you enter in, or for anyone who should knock on your door for that matter, that they would see the Torah, the commandments on your door frame. Can you imagine what message that would send the world? Perhaps it was send the same message that Joshua shared with the Hebrews as they exited from Egypt, as they were struggling with what they should do. And this is what Joshua told them. If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. Uh, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. When is the great commandment relevant? The answer is, when is it not? Is it too late to change the headlines? The answer is, absolutely not. Because the moment you share the love that's so deep inside of you that it manifests in ways that simply tells folk, who are you and who is this God that you love that you radiate when you enter the room? Who is this God that even the very essence of your presence makes me feel comfortable? Who is this God that you would actually forgive so easily? Who is this God that actually gives you strength to go through trying times that when in times of mourning you can find strength in the Holy Spirit so that when that love manifests in you that you don't even have to say a word but they know there's something about you that radiates the love that created you. When that day happens, we can change the headlines. In Jesus' name, amen.